You are watching Fugitive Red Eye, and, uh, I guess this is a random thought, so we'll call it that. But today we're going to be talking about things that everyone else seems to fucking hate, but it really isn't bad, and I can't see why people hate them so much. As the title implies, these are things that I like, which are wildly considered to be unpopular and hated, so... Uh, without further ado, here goes. Uh, first thing I'd like to talk about is a video game. And that video game is Duke Nukem Forever. Now, a lot of people absolutely hated that game, because, um... It's not as good as Duke Nukem 3D, I'll give it that. But a lot of people say, oh, it's, you know, the humor is dated, and they, they call the game sexist, and they, uh, say that it's really bad, and that it has all these issues, and... You know, frankly, some of their points are very valid. Like, for instance, the loading screens, I do admit, are very, very, very long. And, like I said, it's nowhere near as good as Duke Nukem 3D. The game is far too linear for a Duke Nukem game. It's very, uh... Very linear, and, uh, there's hardly anywhere you can go that isn't, you know, predetermined. It's far too modernized, uh, for sure, in the gameplay, whereas... I don't agree with the whole dated humor thing. I think that, you know, having... You know, it, it's, it's a game based on a 90s series. I think having some of that 90s humor intact makes it true to its, uh, source. Now again, the gameplay isn't true at all to the source material, so again, I can see the argument there on why it's bad. And the graphics are nothing to write home about, they're absolute crap. They look like an original Xbox graphics when they were, you know, Xbox 360 and PS3. They look like they could be on a PS2 or original Xbox. But graphics aren't everything, and, uh, I think that the game is still very enjoyable. It's very funny, I think. You know, it's, it's... It's still immature humor, but that's what Duke Nukem's always been. And the characters are one-dimensional, but again, staying true to its roots in that aspect. Well, I can see why everyone got pissed off and disappointed, because the game itself was in development hell for 15 years before finally getting released. Not to mention the fact that the game... It's... It had a er very... Me ve uh. I fucked up there, but it had a lot of earlier versions that were much, much better. Uh, like the 2000 version of the game looked like it would have been completely different. And in fact, it might have been way, mo way more well received back then. But I think that the game is very underrated, and uh, if you're looking for a good, funny shooter that's... If you don't take it too seriously, the game can be very enjoyable, I think. It has very immature humor, and... Well, it's, you know, not something that SJWs would like, because it is very, very anti-PC, and all the women are incredibly sexist stereotypes. It's still a very enjoyable game, and I think that it's underrated. Another video game that I really liked that a lot of people hated was Brink. While the game itself, uh, I think that the hype really is what killed it, it, uh, it basically brags that it's, like, the most customizable game ever, and your character can have all these different possibilities. Although all the character faces look like total ass, I will give it that. And the gameplay is incredibly repetitive. I think that the game is still very good, and, uh, although I, there are things that I don't like about it, I think that it gets very, very much more hate than it deserves. It has an amazing soundtrack. The story is really good. Uh, the fact that you get to play both sides, I think, is really good. Not to mention there's several what-if levels that aren't part of the main storyline for either side, but they're what-if scenarios that have alternate endings. I in Brink, you play as either the Resistance or the Security on this megacity known as the Ark. It's, it's very fun. I don't know why people hate it so much. Yes, it is incredibly repetitive, and frankly, I would get sick of it if I played it for too long, but it's still a really good game to play, you know, for a little bit at a time every once in a while. It's incredibly difficult, though, um, so, you know, I, I haven't beat it. It's very tough, my, and plus my copy's actually broken. There's a crack in the disc. But, uh, Brink is very underrated, and I definitely recommend giving it a play if you can find it. It's like a dollar at the store, so, you know, I would recommend it. 
Moving swiftly on, I thought we'd talk about some TV episodes that for some reason everyone seems to hate. For whatever reason, a lot of people hate the darker Spongebob episodes, like One Course Meal, or, uh, Are You Happy Now? But those are fucking classic episodes. Why do people- I mean, they're not classic as in old, but they're amazing. I mean, why do people hate them so much? I like it when Spongebob gets a little bit darker. It's- it's funny. It's- you know, people praise the shit out of Invader Zim for being dark, but when a show like Spongebob does it, they somehow get upset, which I don't get, because both are great. I mean- I don't know. It, maybe that's just me. I like darker episodes. And speaking of which, uh, I think uh, a whole series that a lot of people completely misjudge is the Ren and Stimpy adult party cartoon. Now, there's actually one episode that I myself absolutely hate. And that's the one where they're living in that spittoon. It's fucking gross. But, uh... Whatever reason, people don't like Ren Seeks Help, which is my favorite episode of not only the adult party cartoon, but also of Ren and Stimpy all together. Yes, it's a lot darker and more fucked up, but that's what makes it great. It was actually originally written in 1991 during the show's original run, but it was never aired, it never was made back then because of Nickelodeon standards and practices. Now, what a lot of people don't realize I'm, is that. You know, Ren and Stimpy's known for its darkness. I mean, everyone probably realizes that. I don't know why I said that, but what I don't get is why do people hate it so fucking much? It's a really great episode, and in fact, it emphasizes some of the darker, better bits of the Ren and Stimpy adult party cartoon. Granted, the case blatantly lies and claims that the entire adult party cartoon was written back in those days, when actually the only one that actually got completed back then, uh, that was, uh, written back then, was Ren Seek's Help. The rest were all completely new, with the exception of Man Best Friend, which had, Man's Best Friend, which hadn't aired previously on TV, uh, although it is included on the seasons one and two box set of Ren and Stimpy as well. So, that being said, I really don't think that they are misleading when they call it the lost episodes on the DVD release, but at the same time, there is that Ren Seek's Help, and they did actually plan several other episodes that were written during the show's original one to run to be completed, but no, it didn't get done because the show was universally panned, even though it's still really good. And the thing, the thing I don't get is people liked Sven Hoek, uh, which is a really fucking dark episode of the original Ren and Stimpy, but yet they didn't like Ren Seek's Help because it was quote unquote too mean spirited. I don't know, I don't get how people can not like these things, but again, this is all my opinion, and I know these opinions are somewhat unpopular nowadays. Another thing I really loved, another TV series that a lot of people hated, was Dragon Ball GT. I thought it was uh, a, an adequate sequel to Dragon Ball Z and a great follow-up. I think it was, you know, very good. I think that it gets very mu too much hate. In fact, I don't think, I don't consider it a separate series. I consider Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT to be all one series. And I, I think that it gets very much more hate than it deserves. And part of me thinks, now this is just my opinion, this might not actually be the case, but part of me thinks this is part of a hive mind. People hear about how bad it is and they just jump on the bandwagon. Again, this very much could be not the case, and if it isn't, I'm sorry. If that, if you actually genuinely dislike it, you know that's fine. You know, it's some, it's your opinion, just like this video is just mine. I also really liked the second season to Black Butler, even though a lot of people didn't like that. Same with uh, Psycho Pass or Tokyo Ghoul. You know, second seasons of animes. A lot of the times nowadays, I've noticed they've been basing the first season off a of manga, and then the second season they'll make up on their own. And a lot of people don't like that, but sometimes I think it turns out really well. Round two. Respawn timer in But anyway, that's it for the TV shows, I think. There's also a few movies I like that a lot of people hate, which I'll go over here in just a moment. Like, for instance, uh, the sequel to Donnie Darko, which is S. Darko. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, S. Darko, although it's no Donnie Darko, I think it gets way more hate than it deserves. I'd say it's an okay sequel, I mean... Time resets a lot more, and the plot's a lot more muddled, but I really do think that it's a fairly decent movie, and if you haven't seen it because how bad you've heard it is, I recommend you watch it and decide for yourself what you think about it. Um, there's been quite a few other movies, too, that people, you know, tend to dislike because it's they're considered unpopular. Um, now, this one's technically cheating, because I don't particularly like the movie. I know it's a terrible movie, but at the same time, I enjoy it, even though it's 
fucking horrible. And also, I don't think everyone hates it, so again, this is still kind of cheating on the title, but whatever. It's a random thought, so what the fuck you gonna do about it? But anyway, as I was saying, uh, the one that I'm talking about now is the Star Wars Holiday Special, which a lot of people say is too bad to even be so bad it's good, but I disagree. I actually do enjoy watching it. I've seen it twice. Actually, two and a half times, technically, because I watched it about halfway through with Super Dantastic, and I've seen it twice on my own. Why? I don't know. I, I get a kick out of it. I, that stir-whip-stir-whip-stir stir shit, it makes me laugh every time. But, uh, there's a lot of things that people just prejudge based on, uh, you know, what they hear about it and things like that. Like, uh, for instance, for whatever reason, people didn't like Camp Laszlo on Cartoon Network. I mean, I don't know if everybody hated that, but that, that's an enjoyable show. Why the hell is it not as, not more popular? And, uh, at the same time, it's like, why are people... You know, people, they don't, they didn't like, uh, Squirrel Boy either, which, I mean, wasn't a masterpiece by any sense of the word, but it was a fucking decent show. And, um... You know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, people will jump to conclusions based on, uh, you know, people, for instance, a lot of the times people don't think that, uh, I lost my train of thought there for a split second, and I apologize for that, but, uh, no, another movie that I really like that a lot of people hated is Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Now, it's not as good as the first Mortal Kombat movie, and, uh, it has its problems, like, a lot of characters were recast, some of the acting is laughable. But it's still a, it's still an enjoyable movie to me. It's cheesy as fuck, and it's just enjoyable overall to me. I, I mean, maybe it's because I love shit from the '90s, uh, partially because I was born in the '90s, I guess. But I fucking love cheesy shit. I, I just do. I don't know why, but I'm sure that every there's a lot of other people who agree with me on that, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who disagree with me on that. But I really do think that Mortal Kombat Annihilation gets more hate than it deserves too. But uh, other than that, th like I said, this video's been all just my op my opinion. Of course, I'm sure a lot of people are going to disagree with me on a lot of this stuff, and that's totally fine. Um, one other thing I just kind of want to bring up, I remember earlier in the video I mentioned Duke Nukem, the females were kind of uh, a sexist stereotype. Well, that goes for males, too, when you think about it, because in Duke Nukem Forever, all the males think about is sex and shit, so... It goes both ways. I don't think the game is completely sexist against women. I think it stereotypes both genders equally. At least from my experience playing it. And I'd also recommend that you play the uh, DLC, The Doctor Who Cloned Me. Uh, it's a Terminator reference. Uh, it's, it's like nine bucks and the game itself is like a dollar. So it is a little bit more pricey than you'd probably want to pay for it, but... If you're really into Duke Nukem 3D and you like having a laugh, and as long as you don't take the game too seriously, it's pretty fun. Keyword, don't take it seriously, like I said. But anyway, um, these are the things that I consider to be at least somewhat enjoyable that most people despise with a passion. I'm sure there's more on there. Uh, I honestly can't think of anything else at the moment. Probably because I didn't sleep last night, but... Yeah, that's about all I really have to say right now. Um, but other than that, this has been Fugitive Red Eye. Of course, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. And uh, as always, you have a wonderful day. And uh, I hope you'll tune in next time. Not that I'll know because uh, I don't know who you are. Or do I? Perhaps I'm watching you right now through your outside window. Not really. Have a great night.